What's up you guys, Whitney Moore here, and unless you've been living under a rock or something, you know that the smash hit RPG Final Fantasy is back and bigger than ever. Anyway, I didn't grow up with Final Fantasy, but my boyfriend is a little freak for it, so I figured I'd dive right in and see what all the fuss is about. Let's learn together, shall we? Okay, at the time of writing this sentence, here's what I knew about Final Fantasy. Very beautiful music, it's mostly turn-based, and there are giant swords and very attractive and strangely dressed girls and boys. But now, at the time that I am reciting this to you, I have learned so much more. In addition to the 15 main games, there have been 13 damn spin-offs of this game and also a whole bunch of manga and animated series inspired by it. People love this shit, they eat it up, and here's why. Final Fantasy has some of the most inspiring mythos in any game. You become endeared to the characters quickly and then they snatch it away from you, in some cases. Typically, and with the exception of a few spin-offs that went in a completely different direction, like a musical rhythm game, Final Fantasy surrounds some unlikely hero that, against all odds, has to face off against a giant enemy and features sprawling worlds and customizable skills. Sounds pretty standard, so why are people so obsessed with this series? Well, the one Final Fantasy game that hooked almost everybody was Final Fantasy VII, but before I get to that, I'll give you a quick history lesson because there are six other games that came before that. Duh! So, way back in 1987, Hironobu Sakaguchi created Final Fantasy, which was essentially a Dragon Quest ripoff that he didn't expect to do well at all. In fact, he had so little faith in the game's success that he called it Final Fantasy because he thought that it would be the last game he would ever create. Man, was he wrong. Final Fantasy was your standard Japanese RPG model that featured a field map where you could wander around and talk to people and a battle zone that you'd get transported to whenever an enemy approached you. That was the case all the way up to 11, but it was 7 that a ton of people regard as the iconic Final Fantasy game. If you happen to have had a PS1, you experienced the thrill of 3D rendered graphics for the first time, and that is in part why so many people remember 7 the most fondly. Similar to how there are plenty of great Mario games, but the outstanding Mario game will always be the Nintendo 64 one to me, and while the graphics were visually impressive for the time, it's really the story that hooked pretty much everybody. Final Fantasy VII follows Cloud Strife, a mercenary who joins the eco-terrorist rebel organization Avalanche to stop the world-controlling megacorporation Shinra from draining the life of the planet to use as an energy source. Cloud and his allies become involved in a larger world-threatening conflict against Sephiroth, the main antagonist who apparently has total daddy issues. The story is hard to describe in part due to very shitty English translations, but some people still consider it the greatest story ever told in gaming. Even if the plot is hard to follow for some people, most people who played 7 agree that it was funny, endearing, had plenty of twists, and some really heartbreaking moments. For a lot of people, this was the first peek into truly immersive gaming. Combined with the sheer scale of a free-roaming game and all the cool places it takes you to, it's no wonder Final Fantasy 7 has a special place in the hearts of gamers in their 20s or 30s. Okay, so after 7, what happened? Well, there was 8, of course, which is about an angsty teen named Squall and his adventures in military school, then like, space and prison and a bunch of other places. Then 9 was a medieval throwback with knights and wizards, and 10 was the one with Titus and that crazy ass laugh he had. <laughs> From there, Eleven switched over to a massively multiplayer online RPG, and Twelve was a single-player experience with a heavy politically-based story. Then Thirteen returned to a linear console game that was later released for PC Bros. Then Fourteen was a failed MMORPG that Square revamped and re-released. Okay, now we have Fifteen, which is, from what I've gathered, a pretty sweet hybrid of the old gaming style and the new mechanics from Thirteen. So, if you've boarded the hype train for Fifteen but never picked up a Final Fantasy game before in your life, do you need to start at the beginning or even at Seven? Absolutely not. The franchise features a rotating cast of characters, stories, and worlds, and they are not linear. The items are pretty much called the same things, and there are a couple recurring characters like the Chocobos and the Moogles. That said, there are a lot of Final Fantasy games that have aged really well. A popular one is 6, which you can play on the Wii, although it goes by the Super Nintendo title, which was 3. Confusing, I know, but since the OG 2, 3, and 5 weren't ever released in the United States, 4 and 6 took on the title of 2 and 3 when they were released in America. Yikes. Anyway, you can also pick up 9 in the place PlayStation Store, and obviously 7 might be worth checking out as well, but they might end up remaking it as soon as next year, so those of you who don't have the patience for old turn-based games might want to wait for that to experience the classic story. I don't know about any of you, but if I miss the boat on a particular fandom, I tend to refuse to get into it out of sheer spite. It's not a good thing to do, and I've missed out on plenty of really cool things just because sometimes I'd rather not even show up to the party when I'm already late. However, researching all of these Final Fantasy games has made me genuinely want to fully immerse myself 
yourself into the worlds because they seem like true adventure games. So while it's less about the actual plots or battles, it seems like it's about transporting you to fantastic new worlds, and I am so totally down for that. What's your opinion on the Final Fantasy games? Are there any other franchises you want to see me dissect and try to explain? Let me know in the comments below. I'm Whitney Moore, and I'll see you next time. One tactic, make some super animals. Everybody loves animals. Throw a cape on a puppy and people will scream, yes, please give me more. Has decided to rank something we care about. It's a list of literally the things we care about. The Fandom 250.